Good morning everyone. Today I am going to speak on the poem A Red Red Rose. Before we begin the discussion of the poem, let me tell you about the poet Robert Burns. Robert Burns was born in Ayrshire, Scotland. He wrote lyrics and songs in Scots and English. It is due to his substantial contribution to poetry he earned name, fame, recognition and popularity not only in Scotland but across the globe. He is called the National Poet of Scotland. As a poet, he strongly believed in the democratic principles of freedom, fraternity, equality and social justice. He was a critic of the orthodox religion and its morality and believed in the ideas of egalitarian society. He became rebellious as he saw and experienced how inhumanly the farmers and the laborers were exploited by the social and political order of the day. Robert Burns criticized and condemned all the forms of orthodox religion and political dogma as both, according to him, helped in sustaining inequality and inhumanity in society. Robert Burns is also regarded as the people's poet of Russia. His writings were translated into Russian languages and he became a perennial source of inspiration for the oppressed, suppressed and exploited people in Russia. His projection of the egalitarian ideas in But the Ode for George Washington and is there for honest poverty touched and appealed the hearts of the common people and inspired them to rebel against the social order of the day. Robert Burns is also considered a pioneer of the Romantic movement in literature. He influenced the great Romantic poets like William Wordsworth, Astrid Courage, and P.B. Shelley. He prominently talked about egalitarian society, radical ideologies, poverty, class inequalities, gender bias, patriotism, and Scottish cultural identity in his writings. These are some of his famous poems To a Mouse, Tam O'Shanter, Coming Through the Rye, To a Mountain Daisy, Holy Village Prayer, Sweet Upton, The Quarter's Saturday Night, Halloween, and A Red Red Rose. Dear students, this poem was first published in 1794 and you might have read that in Robert Burns' time, the church condemned the idea of love and opposed the union of two minds as it was against the morality of the church and its orthodox religion. But Robert Burns stood against all such forms of orthodox religions and its morality. In this poem, A Red Red Rose, Robert Burns expresses his defaced feelings of love for his beloved and promises lifelong bonding and commitment to his beloved in all the ups and downs in their lives. So he says his love is pure, spiritual, and eternal. Let us see what Robert Burns has to say in this poem, A Red Red Rose. Before we move on to the discussion, let me recite this poem, A Red Red Rose. 
Oh, my love is like a red, red rose that is newly sprung in June. Oh, my love is like the melody that is sweetly played in tune. As fair art thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I. And I will come this till, my dear, till all this is gang dry. So, in this first two stanzas, the poet is talking about his deepest feelings of love. Let us see what he has to say in the first stanza. In the first stanza, he says that his love is like a red rose. And as you all know that rose is a symbol of love. So he says that his love is as fresh as a rose. He says that his love is as lively as the rose flower. Both are full of fragrance. So he compares his love to a red rose and says that it is newly sprung in the month of June. In the third line, we see that he compares his love to the music, to the melody. And we often live, we often listen music. Why? The reason is the music appeals to our hearts. The music is heart touching. So we often listen to the music. So the poet is comparing his love to a sweet melody. The melody that we often like to listen again and again. And this melody is sweetly played in tune. So his love is as sweet as the melody. So in these four lines, the poet is using the figure of speech simile. And what is simile? It is a poetic device in which the poet compares two dissimilar things or objects and shows a kind of similarity between those two dissimilar things. Now, love and rose are different, but the poet is presenting a similarity. And what is that similarity? That his love is as fresh as rose. His love is as lively as rose. It is full of fragrance. So he is presenting this similarity. In the second example, Oh, my love is like the melody. He is comparing the sweetness of his beloved with that of the music. So he is using uh, this figure of speech simile to focus, to emphasize his deepest feelings of love. In the second stanza, he says, as fair art thou, my bonny lass. So here he talks about the physical beauty of his beloved and says that she is very beautiful. So he is in deep love with her and he will continue to love her till all the seas gang dry, till there is water in the ocean. So you know that the water in the ocean will never go dry. Similarly, and his, similarly, his feelings of love will never dry up for his beloved. Now let us move on to the third stanza of the poem. Till all the seas gang dry, my dear, and the rocks melt with the sun. And I will love thee still, my dear, while the sands of life shall run. And fare thee well, my only love. And fare thee well a while, and I will come again, my love, though it were ten thousand miles. So here, in the third stanza, he repeats the first line. Till all this is gang dry. This line he has repeated in the, this line we see in the second stanza of the poem. He uses this line to heighten his feelings of love for his beloved. And says that he will continue to love her till there is water in the ocean and the rocks melt with the sun. And you know that the rocks will never melt in the heat of the sun. So he means to say that his love will remain forever. He will continue to love his beloved forever till there is water in the ocean and till the rocks melt in the heat of the sun. I will love this till my dear while the sands of life shall run. He says he will continue to love her. So this is a lifelong bonding. 
this is a lifelong bonding so he says he will continue to be with her in all the difficult times of their lives so here in this stanza the poet is using hyperbole what is an hyperbole hyperbole is an exaggerated statement and the poet is using this statement to emphasis to give emphasis to what yes his deepest feelings of love for his beloved so he is making use of hyperbole here to express to emphasize his deepest feelings of his love and says that he will continue to love her till there is water in the ocean till the rocks melt with the sun and he will be with her in all the difficult times in all the ebbs and types which arise in their lives in the last stanza he says that for some reasons he has to go away from his beloved and fare the well my only love he says to his beloved that for some reason he has to go away now one thing we have to notice here that the poet is using the word only what does it mean it means that he loves only her and no one else and he says and fare the well a while so this parting this separation the separation is not permanent the separation is for some time the separation is for a short while and after that he will come back to her again though he was pain thousand miles away so this is how robert burns expresses his deepest feelings of love uh, for his beloved now let us move on to the last part and that is conclusion robert burns defects his love that is beyond time and place yes his love is beyond time and place how today the poet is not alive his beloved is not alive and you all know that robert burns died young so even after their death they are alive in the form of this poem the poet's love is still there and as long as the water is there in the ocean as long as we get the sunlight from the sun as long as life is there on this earth his love is going to be there it is eternal it is permanent it follows no boundaries of time and place his love is a lifelong bonding as he has promised to his beloved that he would be with her in all the ebbs and tides that would arise in their lives so robert burns uses simple language and striking imagery so the poet is using uh, the simple language of the common people and the as you read the poem we start visualizing the picture so the imagery is very striking it helps to Uh, highlight the intensity of his feelings of love for his beloved so his use of words is lucid he uses striking imagery poetic devices such as simile hyperbole and alliteration which exhibit his mastery over the language that he uses to express his immortal love for his beloved yeah what we have left here alliteration so alliteration is the repetition of sounds in the first line of the poem my love is like a red red rose the consonants lo and ro are repeated so it is an alliteration the poet uses these devices in a subtle manner and visualizes the picture and expresses his deepest feelings of love for his beloved so this is all for today thank you